What is going on YouTube? It's your boy Spanko and today I'm excited because we got a card that just came off the ban list. That's True King Lithosagem and now it's back at three. And this card is absolutely insane in True King Dino. So in today's video, we're going to be doing a True King Dino deck profile. And in tomorrow's video, we're going to be doing a combo video for this deck so you guys can see what this deck can do. Now, if you guys do enjoy these videos, make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel for more Yu-Gi-Oh content just like this one. We upload five days a week here on the channel deck profiles combo videos dual replays all that good stuff you'll see it right here on the channel on top of that we're doing five shorts a week as well so you're going to be getting 10 videos each week all sorts of content you guys are always going to have something to watch so i hope you guys enjoyed today's video and with that let's get right into the deck profile all right so just before we get into this deck profile i just want to say again how powerful i think this deck is now because we have true king lotus Adram back at three which is absolutely insane for the deck it makes this deck insanely consistent and keep it in mind this is a go first build of the deck you want to be able to go first and full combo with this deck every single time and on top of the combos this deck can put out this deck can also do some really crazy things with less of back at three and this card is absolutely insane it's because it triggers all your babies from your hand or your field but on top of that if you destroy two earth monsters with its effect essentially what you can do is you can look at your opponent's extra deck and banish up to three monsters from it with different names now why is this really good now obviously banishing cards from your opponent's extra deck is very powerful however we are are going into a Koshtera format so a lot of people's extra decks are actually going to be prepared for that because the Koshtera does usually rip cards out of your opponent's extra deck anyway so then why is Litho so good if people are going to be prepared for the banish effect well the thing is with this card is it actually gives you information into what you're playing against so you can actually build your boards based off of what the opponent is playing so keep that in mind right if you guys are seeing that it's an extra deck full of super poly targets and all these cards that you would typically see in a trap based deck then maybe you make a Logia over a Dolka in your combo but the whole point of the deck is essentially that you can now look at your opponent and have that information. So for that reason, we are playing three Litho, of course. Then, of course, we're just playing the standard Dino stuff. Three Oviraptor, one Miscellaneous. We're playing three Baby Cerasaurus, as well as one Petit Pteranodon. Now, we're only playing one Petit. I still wouldn't even up this Petit to two, to be honest with you. This card is really good, don't get me wrong. However, it's actually not the best one to draw. Keep in mind, the best combos are still Misc plus Baby, Ov plus Baby, Ov plus Misc. And Petit on its own doesn't really help you combo all that well unless you specifically open it with the litho which now of course does give you a lot higher of a chance because you have three but the second petite would have taken spots of other cards that i thought were just better so for that reason i'm just playing the one petite trust me it's all you're gonna need we're playing the two archosaur of course still because this card is very important to get to your pill two of the conductor tyranno one pancratops we're playing one giant rex two scrap raptor and one scrap chimera this is all the standard dino stuff now why we're still playing the pancratops even though this is a go first build of the deck the reason is because there's a lot of times on your end board you can end on a petite pteranodon with your conductor on the board so what you end up doing in those kind of combos is you end up using the tyranno to destroy the petite on your opponent's turn to book of moon all of your opponent's monsters once they're all book of moon what you can end up doing is summoning the pancratops from your deck with the petite pteranodon and now pancratops is going to be able to pop another card your opponent controls if need be or it's just a nice big body for you so that's why i still like playing the one pank even though this is a go first build of the deck and the thing is with dino man i'm gonna be honest with you this card right over here single-handedly just destroys the cost matchup like i'm gonna be honest with you guys if you can put this card up on the board and just flip and book of moon all your opponent's cards keep in mind cost doesn't typically just put up omni negates and whatnot so for that reason if you're just able to summon conductor you're just breaking your opponent's board which is absolutely insane so anyways that's it for the dinos it's the most standard dino stuff as well as the scrap stuff over here you of course are going to be playing this is just way too powerful going first for your combos going second as well it helps you break boards so i I like playing the scrap combo and all these dino cards here are very very standard now the next card we're playing here is three kosh sir fenrir and you guys might be wondering okay well this card is obviously really good for a lot of situations obviously if you're going first you can just start off your turn by summoning your fenrir which is not bad in a lot of different ways it's a body for you it's a banish for you there's so many different things fenrir is very powerful for but the thing with fenrir is it does it has two specific reasons why it's really good outside of its generic goodness i guess you could say and the two reasons are one it's an earth so it's another fodder target for your litho but 
it actually searches itself when it's summoned. You can summon your Fenrir, activate its effect to add another Fenrir from your deck to your hand. Now, what do you have? Extra fodder for your Litho. So it just synergizes so well together because Fenrir is just going to keep giving you the extra earth fodder, which now is going to help you get into banishing your opponent's extra deck. Because keep in mind, to get the banish effect, it has to be two earth monsters. Now, again, that's not super hard to do with this deck. You have stuff like Baby that's an earth, Giant Rex is an earth, Pancratops is an earth if you end up drawing it. You have the Scrap Raptors an earth, which you end up drawing as well, like just in case it does happen. But now you have something like a Fenrir where you don't have to use some of your other resources, something like a Pancratops, something like a Scrap Raptor. You don't have to use those anymore because Fenrir will get you another Fenrir from your deck to your hand. And then now you have that earth fodder with something like a baby. And it doesn't matter what the second card is because as long as you're resolving one of the babies, at least you're in a really good spot here, right? So I really like Fenrir. It has multi-uses, multi-purpose in this deck, which is really nice. Then of course, we're playing three Fossil Dig, two Double Evolution Pill, as well as one Terraforming and one Set Rotation. We included set rotation back. Why is that? Because we're playing the three Lost World as well as the Diagram. Now, Diagram, of course, we all know synergizes with this deck because you destroy a baby, you get the combo off. Diagram plus baby is another two card combo, which is really nice that this deck adds. But the really cool thing is we're back to playing Lost World. So if you guys saw my most recent Dino builds, I actually cut Lost World for a long time. There was a lot of reasons that I explained in the other videos, but to keep it short, pretty much a lot of the other decks that I've been playing more recently for Dinos is a going second OTK build because that's just how I felt like the deck was better going into those formats now i'm still testing with this format if you want to go first or if you want to go second but i will say this because this deck specifically wants to go first setting up a lost world is insane against the koshter format you're putting up a token on their side of the field which means now if they have a koshter unicorn let's just say in their hand they can't just special summon it to start their combos now yes if they have a koshter birth then they would have to have the koshter birth plus like a unicorn and then they would be able to normal summon the unicorn but then at that point you know like they have to have multiple cards in their hand Hand, and they still can't target cards on the field because they have the token on their side of the field so there's just so many different things that lost world does in today's format that it wasn't doing in the last few formats and that's why i'm playing the lost world now at three and again i know i kind of went into a long explanation but i get this comment all the time why aren't you playing lost world why are you playing lost world lost world is a great card don't get me wrong but again it all just comes down to what is the format for this card and in today's format if you want to go first lost world is really good into kashtara and of course like i said we're playing the one diagram then for consistency we're playing three pot of prosperity just to be able to get you to any combo piece that you need as well as three book of eclipse now book of eclipse is something that i decided to add into the deck even though you're going first in this deck being able to set this is still very very powerful on top of that with book of eclipse if you are forced to go second this does help you break the cost board and it synergizes really well with your ultimate conductor tyranno because all you have to do is flip all of your opponent's monsters face down and you're never really worried about the draw effect because as long as you can get conductor on the field you're getting all your opponent's monsters off the field anyway and this pretty much helps you because in the Koshtara matchup, when you are playing against that deck and they set up the Arise Heart, which essentially is a Macrocosmo against you, Macrocosmo can be pretty tough because your monsters aren't going to the graveyard. If your monsters aren't going to the graveyard, you don't really have any way to summon your Conductor Tyranno, and that's the biggest win con for the deck. So for that reason, we are playing the Book of Eclipse just in case you are forced to go second. Again, when you're forced to go first, it's not horrible either because you can just set it and then you have another form of disruption even if your opponent breaks your board in any way. So I know I went in depth a little bit with this deck, but I think this deck is really, really cool, really, really powerful. Powerful. And I said it in the intro, but I'm going to be doing a combo video in tomorrow's video so you guys can see the combos of what this deck can do. But they're typical dino combos. But the thing is, when you get the Lithosadrum effect, you're getting the information of your opponent, you're getting to banish cards from the extra deck, which is really, really powerful. So 40 cards in the main deck, I wouldn't change this. It's very, very consistent, very, very powerful. Then for the extra deck here, we are playing the one Kashtara Shangri-La. So the reason we're playing Shangri-Era, okay, Shangri-La, that's what I'm calling it. But Shangri-Era, we're playing one because I really believe that in today's side deck, you have to be playing three Ghost Reapers because this is the most important card. And if you're able to banish this card to start your turn, if you're forced to go second, then it becomes a really big issue for Kostra. Yes, they're still going to be able to play with something like a Fenrir, but keep in mind, you have outs to those as well. So that's not a big issue being able to banish this. And, and again, that's why we're playing the one because we're playing the, I 100% recommend playing three cherries in your side deck for today's format. All right, so we're going to keep that in mind. We're playing two Dolka as well as one Logia. These, of course, are very self-explanatory. You want to be playing these. We're playing the one Baguska. Baguska is really good into a lot of different matchups. You guys can see we cut Dweller, and that's because Taylor Mintz is gone. I don't want to worry about it. 
No one wants to worry about it. Dweller's gone. We don't need it. We could be Baguska instead. Now, obviously, if we feel like Dweller is actually really good into today's format, if Tierlemins or some kind of graveyard effect based deck becomes good, then you can just swap this for a Dweller. But again, with Kashta running around, I think Baguska is just better in today's format. We're playing the one Link Karibo as well as the one Secure Gardener, of course. The one Pentastag, the one Scrap Wyvern, IP Mascarena, just a lot of utility cards here. Dark as well. Dark is not too bad in this deck because you have something like Ovi, which can make it dark, and Dark can steal an opponent's monster from their graveyard, then you can go from there, right? Dark is not as prevalent as it was in the last format, but I still think it's a really good link too that you can play. Something that you guys can swap out into something else if you guys really wanted to, but I think Dark is pretty cool here. We are playing the one Unicorn, which by the way, Dark helps you get into Unicorn pretty easily, which is really nice. We're playing the one Apollo because you want to end most of your turns on an Apollo, plus the Axis Code Talker, and then lastly, we're playing the one Savage Dragon. So the extra deck here doesn't need too much explanation. Again, the only reason we're playing the one Stronger Law is because I really think that Winter Cherries is really important in today's format. So that's it for the main deck and the extra deck here. I'm really excited to be showing you guys these combos because Litho back at three gives this deck so much different lines that it didn't have before. Now, yes, the end boards are going to be very similar to the past end boards, but again, you're getting the litho effect of banishing cards from your opponent's extra deck you're getting the consistency of litho which is also really nice so i hope you guys enjoyed today's deck profile i really want you guys to try this out because i think this deck is really really cool into today's format so that is it for today's video i hope you guys did enjoy that was my take on true king dino for this upcoming format now keep in mind there's a lot of cards dino now has access to the way that i built this deck for today's format just so you're able to full combo get a really really powerful board and again the combo is going to be in tomorrow's video so you guys are going to get a better sense of what I mean by the full combo but once you guys see the combos you'll understand why the deck is built the way it is so I hope you guys did enjoy if you guys did make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel for more Yu-Gi-Oh content just like this one we upload five days a week here on the channel deck profiles combo videos dual replays all that good stuff on top of that we do five shorts every week as well so you're getting 10 videos a week all sorts of content so much for you guys to watch I hope you guys enjoying with that Spanko signing out peace